Well, hello, this is Adam, and welcome back to Rare Classic Cars. Today, we're going to talk about the shortest lived Ford engine, at least that I know of. If I'm missing one, please let me know. But we're going to talk about the shortest lived one that I know of, and that is the two model year only 410 cubic inch FE or Ford Etzel V8 engine that was under the hood of 1966 and 1967 Mercury's only. This was an engine that, as I said, was only used under hood in Mercury's for two model years. So it's probably also one of the rarest Ford engines produced because Mercury really didn't sell too many vehicles during this time frame, aside from the Cougar once it was introduced. And you couldn't get a 410 cubic inch V8 in that. But my 67 Park Lane Brome has one under hood. So let's take a look and talk a little bit more about this 410 cubic inch V8. Okay, we're going to pop the hood now, which of course is external. I did like that Mercury gave you two safety catches here. On the Ford LTD, you only got one. But there it is. This is the 410 cubic inches, it says Marauder V8 here, in this 67 Park Lane Brome. Now, as I mentioned, the 410 was only offered for two model years, 1966 and 1967, and Mercury only. And it was the standard engine in the park lanes as well as the Colony Park. And I guess they just wanted to give you something a little bit different than the 390 that you could get in the Fords and didn't quite want to give you the 428. So you, in 1967, as an example, Mercury had the 390 four Venturi, they had a two Venturi as well, and they had a 428 four Venturi engine that were really bracketing this in the lineup. The 410 made 330 horsepower in both years that it was produced, and in 1967 it also made 444 pound-feet of torque. On the lower end, the 390 premium fuel four Venturi made 320 horsepower, and on the upper end, the 428 cubic inch four Venturi made 345 horsepower. So there really wasn't much difference between all these different engines. They're pretty similar, but Ford wanted to give you, as I said, something a little bit different here. Now the 410 shared the same 4.05 inch bore as the 390, but it used the 428 crankshaft to elongate the stroke. And as a result, you got a 410 instead of a 390 and really didn't take much effort. You just took a 428 crank and put it in a 390 effectively and you have this engine. And this is Ford's FE V8, as I mentioned. FE stands for Ford Edsel. The FE V8s complemented the MEL, the Mercury Edsel Lincoln V8s. And they ranged in displacements. The smallest one was 332 cubic inches in 1958 and 9 Fords, as well as Canadian Edsels, and up to 428 cubic inches. And of course, there was also the famed 427 V8, the kind of racing engine that you could get. But this 410 was basically just made to be a more premium version uh, from a standard engine perspective in these top of the line Mercury's. So if you got the Park Lane as an example, you got the 410. If you got the Monterey or the Montclair, you got the 390. And it gave you just a little bit more scoot. Other than that, these engines look pretty much identical, have the same elements as the 390's and the 428's. You can see this one obviously does not have air conditioning, but it does have power steering, does have power brakes, first year for the dual chamber, master cylinder. Ford really loved having the oil fill here under the breather, and I don't know why, but not just these FE V8s, but other Ford V8s, including the successor to the FEs, like the 429s and 460s, also had the oil fill under the breather, too. You can see the distributor is in the front on these FE V8s, and well, some people prefer it there as opposed to the back. The one thing about these, I will say, is that sometimes the distributors and on the successor ones as well tend to get stuck and it's kind of fun trying to soak the distributor with PB Blaster over a period of time to try to get it to break loose and tapping on this a little bit gently or on the underside of the distributor housing gently to put some vibrations into it to get it to move back and forth so that you can set the timing appropriately. 
This car also has the first year Autolite 4300 carburetor. Before this, Ford had the Autolite 4100 carburetor, which was the basis for the Autolite 2100 two barrel. Both the 2100 and the 4100 were excellent carburetors. This 4300, well, I would just say it's junk. And in 1967 alone, it was a smaller CFM than 1968 and later. In 1968, it went to become 600 CFM. I think in these it's 474 CFM, so it's a pretty small four barrel. You can see the secondaries there. It's not really much of a spread bore carburetor either, like the Quadrajet. And these were tended to be jetted pretty lean. They were an emissions carburetor, really designed to work with the next generation engine that would come out as well. I'll put that back on here. Give me one second. There we go. So they weren't really that great of a carburetor, although this engine isn't set up to ingest a lot of air, so you don't need a lot of CFM in the carburetor, and it's plenty, plenty peppy, I would say. One other great thing about the FE engines is this. Talk about a smooth running, ultra quiet engine. This car has only 18,000 miles on it and it runs every bit of it. I mean, it's just so, so smooth. The only thing you hear really is because it's a non air conditioned car, it doesn't have a declutching fan. And I have put factory style dual exhaust on this car. That are just whisper quiet. And it runs absolutely great. So like I said, one of the beautiful things about these FEs is just the smoothness of them. Frankly, I think smoother than the 429s and 460s that would replace them. And they have a wonderful sound to them too. So let me know if you think I missed. Is there an engine with a shorter life than this 410 cubic inch FE V8? I don't think so. But if I miss one, feel free to let me know. Hope you enjoyed this look at an awesome two-year only 410 cubic inch Mercury only V8 engine, the 410 V8. And just inside here, Just an overall smooth running engine. Oh, you got the belt light there that went out. Gotta make sure you fasten your belts. One thing about these Mercury's is they also have a cold light, which I'll show you too, that obviously came on when I first started this vehicle and the engine was cold. We'll take a look at that. And you have the cold light here and a cool, turn signals as well. Hope you enjoyed the spotlight on the Ford 410 V8. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And check out the video thumbnails at the bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.